Welcome to the Smith and Rowland Show. Let's join our host, Alan Smith and Jeff Rowland. Hello, world. <laughs> it's us again. <laughs> The Smith and Rollin' Smith and Podcast. Podcast. We are here to brighten your day. One and all. And to share with you uh, great insights and wisdom because that's what we do. We sure hope so. We'd at least like to share just mm-hmm. enough to let you know that there are other ways to think on some things. Yes, that's exactly right. We got right. an article here today, Mr. Rollin'. Yeah, and it's a, it's it's an interesting article on a number of levels. It's on the screen here. There. Yeah. When we get Which down into is, the article, I, I'm I'm excited about it. I think you pulled up and put on a database for us and mm-hmm. from the stream. Yep. It's the title being Harris versus Trump is 2024, the Great Reset of the Church. What a title that is. So, well, one thing. Wow. Sh- wow. Shane, I can see Shane it. Eidelman is the author. Yes. And he's Shane. also a pastor. Oh, okay. He's a pastor. <laughs> and um, gotcha. so he's coming from a perspective of. What is the church going to be like if wow. Kamala Harris wins? You go, Shane. And then what is the church going to be like if Donald Trump wins? And I think that is a question that Christian people need to ask prior to the election. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It should guide even our voting habits. You would I think, think so. You know, what does this what does this mean for the church? And isn't it odd that we're now living in an age, Alan, where elections have consequences upon the church based on who's president of the united states think of that wow think of that Mm -hmm. and everybody preaches separation of church and state it's designed to keep the the government out of the church Mm -hmm. not the other way around Mm -hmm. but we're facing an election where there's going to be consequences on the church based on who wins this and this hate speech concept calling true debate hate speech yeah it's just a ploy of the enemy (laughs) oh absolutely it's just a ploy i mean when did this can i say something before you start the article when do we start running our lives about if I hurt your feelings? Well, I mean, I, I'm not for going around hurt. Far be it from me and you. <laughs> Tell you why? Why, why do you far have to be start? It. Just far be it from me and you that we would ever hurt anybody's feelings. But you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like this is in the the no feeling hurt zone or something. Well, uh, yeah. But if you tell me not to hurt your feelings, guess what? You just hurt my feelings. Yeah, exactly. Let me just throw back the far be it to you, because far <laughs> okay. be it from me. To ever hurt anybody's feelings. I mean, I don't do that. I'm not, I'm not, we sound like a bunch of idiots here. Let's read this article. <laughs> okay, go ahead. It says, there's been a lot of talk lately about the Great Reset. Uh-huh. And and before we go through the article, let's just kind of, I love his play on words here, because that's what the World Economic Forum's agenda that's right. was called, was the Great Reset. It was the Great Reset for the global government. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And they had and the, thinking, and, the global yeah, it, thinking, right, right? Global thinking, and it was a reset for nations around the world to fall in line to the world economic. And it's still agenda. going on. It's still, still going on. Yeah, it's still, still going, going on. on. He uses that play on words. So he says there's been a lot of a lot of talk lately about the Great Reset, resetting the economic and geopolitical aspects of the world with one group of people in Davos, Switzerland overseeing it. Wow, scary. Those of us who are concerned about freedom, religious expression, morality, and a plethora of other topics are mm-hmm. not fans of a great reset. That's right. Now, I would, can I, I just, just call me a, pl- a plethora? I'm a plethora. I'm a plethora. I, I can relate to plethora. In this great reset concept, before we go <coughs> on here, and again, I don't want to get us off topic, but we've got to mention a few things that's happening right mm-hmm. now that's going to come into play, not just in the election, but even in regards to the World Economic Forum's Mm -hmm. agenda of the Great Reset. Right. Iran is now days away from being able to... This uh, is not good. ...release their nuclear... This is not good. I mean, they're talking that they're trying to get it Uh, in there before the the election. Thanks to the U.S. of A., I might add. Yeah, we we financed it. Mm -hmm. We gave them the money to do it. We didn't finance it. We gave them a gift. So before the election, and some speculating they're trying to do it before in case Trump wins. They're trying to get nuclear ready prior to that. That's going to play into this great reset idea because the thinking in the World Economic Forum Mm -hmm. is utopia, peace, tranquility, Mm serenity. We're going to live in a utopian world because everybody's just going to get along. We can't even get along. (laughs) We can't even get Get along along with ourselves. No. Anyway, he goes on to talk about how this election is going to affect the church concerning this great reset. Let's look here. He says, at two possible scenarios regarding the presidency and how they could affect the church. 
I'm still very hopeful about the outcome of all this because my hope is in God. You have anything to say about I the do have something. My theme. hope is in God. Your hope is in God. But I'm hoping that God's not into his wrath. That's all I'm saying. It's because my hope is in God. But the question is, how? what sort of shape is our relationship as a nation with God? You know what I'm saying? Because what God tends to do, he tends to turn you over to your enemies to correct you. That's what he did in the Old Testament. Well, that's Israel. the way I read it. That's, yeah. that's exactly the same he way. He would I raise read. up a more heathen nation that's right. than Israel to Just bring correction. To bring, to Israel. bring correction. Because Israel was his people. So that's the reason I say my faith's in God too, but faith in God to, to, to do what? what? My faith or my plea is that he continues to give us, give us grace and mercy. But let's be honest about it, Jeff. What do we need? When you ask that question, what do we need, here's what comes to my mind. And I know I'm repetitive, and I always will be because I've learned that most people don't hear. What you say? It's the first okay to time repeat what I've taught you. Go ahead. I just don't understand this constant goading you got. <laughs> it's the spirit of I'm a, goading. I'm a farmer. Up. We raise goats. Go ahead. There is a a principle in the word that I think is going to play out in this election. God, through His word, gives people what they want, mm -hmm. especially when they reject what they need. So if we reject what we need, we get what we want, and that's what Romans one is all about. Mm -hmm. After you've rejected his call, he turns you over to your own ways. Mm -hmm. So I agree with his pastor. My hope is in God, too, but I agree with what you said. If our hope is in God, what is God going to do? Well, my hope is in God, and which actually will not have a thing to do with what God does. I can have it in him or not. It's, yeah, not, yeah, going that, to change. it's not changing Either God. way, yeah. our hope is in God, but it does not mean that wrath is not going to come or judgment's not going yeah, to come. Yeah, or, or at the least— <clears throat> God steps back and allows us to deal with the consequences in which we have created. And that in itself is a judgment that, well, it's self-imposed judgment, but that's enough to destroy ourselves. Oh, absolutely. And, and can you, I just can't imagine what we've got here. We've discussed this before, but Jeff, I, a lot of people that are pro-woke and all of this mess, I mean, I, I want to say this and I, I'll get some more fan mail. I'm almost to the point that I've talked with quite a few people that can't see what we're saying about the morality, about abortion, about all this ungodliness, mm -hmm. transvestites in the pulpit. You know, I know those are extremes. And I know there's a lot of things to talk about that's even lesser than that, perhaps. Listen, Jeff. I've talked to these people about the ways of God, and they don't have any wiring. Mm -hmm. They don't have any concept mm -hmm. of what I'm trying to communicate with them. Now, I'm beginning to wonder, do you really think maybe people can't see what we're saying without the Spirit of God, without the Holy Ghost inside of them? In other words, I'm not so sure me and you were born this smart. Right. I'm wondering if it's not the I mean, seriously, I think yeah. the Holy Spirit gives us the ability— to discern good from evil. Up until this that point of salvation, I don't know that we could even discern too much. So my question is, could it be that our mission needs to be getting people born again instead of trying to persuade them politically? Yeah. If you can hear what I'm saying. I, I, I know there's a few yeah. good people out there that's well, not saved, but that's not the bulk. That's not the bulk, no. And I'll also say that, yeah, if we're going if we're going to lead an evangelistic crusade, I think it probably needs to start in the pews of the church. Yeah. Because I, I, I really am say, I'm not trying to be – I'm not trying to You're have not a, trying to be funny here. No, mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to have a spiritual one-liner either. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I'm convinced of that. But you see what I'm saying? Oh, I understand I'm not exactly sure people can even – we sat down trying to have a, a rational conversation here, and they don't see what you're saying. Yeah. Because – their definition of truth is wrapped up in this idea yeah. of how of a selfishness. So if you break the selfish code, it, you're not in. In other words, if you hear what I'm saying, so yeah. it's it's like without the Spirit of God, everything we're can. Well, this is my right, and that's my. Yeah, I'll, we're, we're we're into this selfish mode, and the selfish mode does not tend to interpret. But I'm wondering if it's the difference. You got the Holy Ghost, and you got the Holy Spirit, and you don't. I mean, not saying I don't know that. If I, I say not saying I don't. I maybe am saying I'm not sure if you can even get it. Without the Holy Spirit, I, I personally don't think you can. I don't. I, it's uh, looking that way. No, I don't think you can. And I'll say, this past Sunday, I'm not saying were, you got to be a, a some saint. I'm yeah. just saying, just the ground rules is you need to be born again. Well, consider we was introducing Revelation nine Sunday. Revelation nine is about the angel that comes down and has the key to the bottomless pit, opens right. it up, and the demonic host mm -hmm. comes. That angel 
that opens up, that has the authority to open up the pit, is, is on mandate and mission from God to release this darkness on the earth. Right. So we were talking about that a little bit. It goes into what Paul is talking about, about the restrainer. Okay. Something is restraining the darkness from totally exactly. prevailing of right course. now. Yes, amen. Even as dark as it is, it can get a lot darker. Mm-hmm. And it's going to get a lot darker. Mm-hmm. When the restrainer... When the restrainer is completely mm-hmm. lifted. Mm-hmm. So without the Holy Spirit, there's nothing but darkness. Saying that's what the Bible says, that's the restrainer. Yes. Is the Holy Ghost. Absolutely. Yeah. Without any... So if the Holy Ghost is not in an individual, is that person, can they be restrained? I don't think they can. Well, I don't. It seems the, like there would be a no, contradiction. Well, it? Right. Well, there would be. And the only thing that is is left to govern you is the government of the flesh, and that's what we're seeing. It's all judged based off of our senses. And, and so, the mission of the church. I mean, I know we need to be somewhat politically minded because you and I both are. Not mm-hmm. that we're the perhaps the examples, but I think we need to be politically minded. But. I think we might need to get more evangelistic minded. <laughs> yeah, or at least to the people of God, there needs to be a fresh infilling of the person of the Holy Spirit. And in the church, I think evangelism does not need to, we need to get not America. invade the church. We need We're, a re- revival in America. Too. We need revival. And we need a spiritual awakening. A spiritual awakening. Right, yeah. And Before you get this, and we're already at a point at your 50 50, you know, at the polls yeah. as far as voting. And I think the only way, I mean, you know, the left's trying to change the change that by importing different bodies yeah. and people into the country. Yeah. Right. And I can say, well, we might need to say, well, bring them on. We're going to get them born again. Anyway, that's something. That yeah, what would I, if we're if, really going to change this country, Jeff, we're going to have to get people born again. Yeah. I'm sorry. And, and we may need to send evangelistic teams to the border to try to get them to Christ when they come across the border. Well, that would help. That may yeah. be part of an immigration policy. We need to <laughs> trust Christ. Do you trust Christ? Need. Okay, come on. Yeah, now. that's right. Yeah. You know, they would say litmus test, but whatever. This guy goes on to say whoever's elected, Kamala Harris or Donald Trump, he says that he believes that something monumental will occur. The church Either will way. be forced to reset. And I think he's right. I think he's right. The church will be forced to reset. And she needs to. She must, he says. It's painfully obvious that most churches do not model themselves after the church that Christ commissioned. Often, God must break us down in order to build us up. What do you think of that concept? That's been my model. I mean, seriously, Mm -hmm. I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. Can't you? Oh, yeah. And if that's true individually, and if it's true as a church, would it also be true nationally? True for a country. That God has to tear it down before we can build it up. Yeah, and, and then he goes on to draw some a comparison here, and, and this, this is where it tweaked my interest, because I had given an opinion mm-hmm. that I, I am convinced now was from the Lord. But he says, okay. he says, a Harris win will no doubt usher in a great reset that leads to greater financial collapse than we are already experiencing. We are seeing signs of this already. Azen, the Old Testament, a Harris presidency may mean that God uses foreign enemies to judge America, this time through the use of open borders. In the church, we will divide even more as the true church is forced to go underground, just as the true church in China has been Mm -hmm. forced to do, although it may take time, it's inevitable. And when I read that in the article the other day, I'd already given a word that, and I believe this, I believe that if Kamala Harris has voted in as president, sometime during her tenure as president, whether it be four years or eight years, I, I have opinions about that. If she gets elected the first time, mm-hmm. I don't think that there's any getting getting her out the second time. I also believe that if she gets elected this time, we'll never see another conservative in the White House. And I believe sometime during her tenure as president, I believe that the government will begin to regulate churches heavier. I think they'll regulate pastors heavier. I think that pastors will find themselves under scrutiny to what they say and to what they preach. And I think that the believing remnant of God will, in in fact, like he's pointing out, have to go underground. What's mm. your thoughts about that? Well, I'm thinking I'm not going underground. I'm thinking we're going to keep blabbing as long as, well, we might be underground. And we might be. <laughs> <laughs> Come think of it. We might be on a CB <laughs> radio. We might, might be underground. Okay. I have one. That this article goes on to say, churches with rainbow flags and positive messages will stay open. I believe that. I believe that, too. And may even be sanctioned by the government. That's what I'm talking about. Right there. Those that compromise God's word will become even more obvious, irrelevant social clubs, 
Lives will not be radically changed in these types of churches because a false prophet is not God's prophet. That's happening right now. You don't have to wait on it. We don't have to wait. That one's already started. All of the foundational pieces is there. Mm -hmm. The church is even debating inside of itself Mm -hmm. all of these issues already from a social standpoint. It's eking into the political realm. There's a lot of people that attend church that thinks that if you're Christian, you have to vote Democrat. And there's a lot of people that think if you're Christian, you have to vote Republican. Now, I have made the statement. And I stand by it. I find it difficult to reconcile your faith in Christ to a political agenda represented by the progressive left. Mm -hmm. I don't see how you can reconcile truth from the Word of God, if your stand is on the Word of God, how you can reconcile that to a left-leaning progressive political philosophy. I don't see how you can reconcile the two. Mm -hmm. I've made that statement. I stand by that statement. I still think that statement's true. I also believe that the government is going to impose that very principle except opposite. And they're going to say you can't be a church unless you adopt our philosophy, unless you say yes to LGBTQ rights, unless you, uh, in your hiring practices, Mm -hmm. hire them to work in your staff. The whole diversity, equity, and inclusion idea that started with the World Economic Forum and has permeated its way through governments, it's already in Canada. It's Canada's all. done. <clears throat> We're locking up preachers you know, that they catch on the street now and putting them in jail for preaching against sin. That's under Trudeau's government. His whole legacy, there's, a, there's an article somewhere in our news feeds on kingdompropheticsociety.org if you want to come there and join. It doesn't cost you a dime, and you can, you can read all of these articles for yourself. But on one of our news feeds, there's an article about, ooh, hello. There's an article on uh, one of our news feeds that Trudeau's greatest legacy in the government there is concerning his LGBTQ leadership in that country and how he has silenced the voice of radical Christians on this subject. Now, that's coming to America. And And he's proud of it. He's very proud of it. So this guy in this article is drawing a distinction between false prophets and God's prophets. And we're going to have to begin to make... It's easy. It's obvious to me that it's easy to how to make that discernment. God's prophets is going to align with the that's word of right. God, but that's where we're headed. Under Harris, social media will censor the truth. People who talk about sin, the inerrancy of the word, Christ as the only Savior of the world, repentance, and so on, will be marginalized and silenced. The government will clamp down on what it deems hate speech and will attempt to silence pastors there who is. don't conform. To their agenda. There it is. I believe right that. Right there it is. I just, I firmly believe that. And you know, Jeff, some of that's already happening in this it country is. a little it bit. Is. We got some pastors, too, that have been locked up. Yeah. Oh, we got uh, people that's been locked up that's in jail right now, elderly people, for praying by an abortion clinic. That's happened here under the Biden now. administration. Yes. yes. So my point is... When you make a statement like this guy is making, who is a pastor, a prolific writer on the stream. I mean, I've read several articles he's written mm-hmm. for the stream. So he writes this, and I would I would say this article is somewhat prophetic. He's making a he's giving a prophecy of mm-hmm. how he sees things under a Harris administration. Now, let's just say he's correct mm-hmm. first. And then we'll look if he's wrong, okay? But let's say he's correct. If he's correct in what he is seeing under a Harris administration, the question then I would have to ask is, if you have trusted Christ as your Savior, can you then reconcile a vote for Kamala Harris? Maybe. Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) I don't see how, Jeff. Uh, I I don't see how you can. For the life of me. I mean, I'm I'm not saying that I've got to be right, but I can't wrap my head around how that could be. Well, it would show me that you're more loyal to a political party than you are the church of God. And it also shows you that you're more loyal. You see, 
people are, the left is liberal. So I think they take great pride in helping those that are in need or disenfranchised, as we call it, or those LGBT. Because, I mean, you're talking about 1, 2% of the population, 1.5 well, or something. Well, that's what it was. They're no, I'm saying not saying that's sympath- like 5%. Well, that's, my, that's including sympathizers, too. Of course, yeah. you got more than that, sympathizers. Yeah, yeah since they've... They've had a lot of a large conversion rate. Well, that's that's worse than COVID, isn't it? And I would say it's more like fifty percent if you count the sympathizers. Yeah, sympathizers. Wow, boy, that's scary. Well, I forgot what I was saying. You, <laughs> it was I got, important. I got, it was it was very. Well, important. I was just saying I don't know how you can possibly, if you name the name of Christ, how could then can you cast a vote for Kamala Harris and be a Christian who is promoting the Word of God and the Church of God? I think that it shows if you do that, then you're compartmentalizing your faith in Christ. What happens in the in the left, I think, is the message of helping the poor or helping the disenfranchised or helping those that need help. You and I are for. The left tends to capitalize on that concept, even though they don't do it, but they still capitalize on the concept, and I think draws in those that we would call the ones that mar- are marginalizers. They marginalize <clears throat> their situation or their stance. But here's the problem. God is a God of grace and mercy, and we're glad, but it's on His terms, not my term. You can get the grace and mercy of God. You can get forgiveness from God. On his terms. It's repentance, and you receive his payment that he did for you. So it's on the blood atonement of Christ. You receive, you do it on, you approach it on his terms. In other words, if you feed the poor and help the disenfranchised and what liberals take great pride in, or they showcase that as their banner, it is more of a, uh, how can I say it? Um, I think they feel like they're really being benevolent to allow people to sin. Mm Mm-hmm and not be delivered from their sin. Now, we agree with helping, but we take it a step further. We believe that you can be delivered from this state. Yeah. We believe there's hope, Yeah. and we go beyond, okay, we're just going to let you live in your sin. We, we're going to accept you in your <clears throat> sin. I mean, just think how macabre that is. People think just because you accept me in my sin that you love me. Because that's the con that's what's happening, Jeff. That that's the reason you got rainbow flags in churches. Yeah. Come as you are, be as you are. Right. And and right. we say come as you are, mm-hmm. but our prayer is you don't leave the same way you this, came. That's right. Because and we call that hope. Yeah. Because the wages of sin we know is death. And so anyway, my point there, I'm not sure what my well, point Well, let me, can, can I just elaborate a little bit based on that point? I had a friend, this has been years ago, I had a friend who was a Christian, loved God, loved the Lord, there's no doubt. But they were uh, left-leaning in their political views. For this reason, this was the only reason cited to me, the programs that the government takes care of the poor with touched their heart. And, and they, were, they, they view that as real Christianity. The danger of that is, if that's your viewpoint, then the government becomes your church. Mm-hmm. Because what the government's doing through these programs, for example, that they say mm-hmm. helps the uh, seniors, or it helps the orphans, or it helps the children, or it helps here, it helps this, and it helps the poor. That's what the church is supposed to be doing. And if the church was a family community, then they would be doing that. They would be looking mm-hmm. after their own. But the church abdicated those responsibilities over to the government. Now, the government cannot do what the church is supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. They've never been able to pull it off. They can't do it with any efficiency at all. And they never will be able to. It doesn't matter if it's Republican administration or Democratic administration. They can't pull it off because it's not within their jurisdiction to do it. That's the church's authority. And until the church picks up that mantra... Mm-hmm and lives that out, it's not going to get done. Again, I'm back to this thing of under a Harris administration, she is promoting equality Mm -hmm. for those that are of a a different sexual Mm -hmm. identity, those that live their lives in in a way that God is not pleased with. Mm -hmm. She is for their protection, but they carry it way beyond that. Mm-hmm. See, I am for their freedom. My hope is that they will meet the Savior 
and be delivered out of that bondage that they're in, Mm -hmm. not kept in that bondage, Mm -hmm. to agree with what you're saying. Under a Harris administration, she disagrees from her political viewpoint to the Christian church in what we preach if we're preaching the Word Mm -hmm. of God. If we're declaring a social gospel or a feel-good message to make everybody feel good in their sin, then that's what she wants to transform the church into. I would just declare that starting with Barack Obama, they don't want to just fundamentally change America. They want to fundamentally transform the church Mm -hmm. as well. And they want the church to preach their message. They'll have to because the church, I don't care what anybody says, the church was the backbone of this nation. Without a doubt. So if you want it to fall, you got to destroy the backbone. That's exactly right. And they're doing a pretty good job. Now, it just so happens I can't blame that all on them. It's because I have to blame, carry a lot of that responsibility myself and ourselves mm-hmm. because we're the backbone of the church. Mm-hmm. And the backbone is what causes you to stand up straight and to walk straight and to walk right. And uh, so I think that the church has lost its backbone. Yeah, boy. Which is now too. we're seeing the effects of it in our nation. Yeah, I totally agree. Jeff, this goes on to say, and citing this, he says, all of this, however, can be the fuel that sparks a powerful revival. Now, this is kind of like comes under your Joshua and Caleb report. Yeah, right, exactly. Here at the end yeah. of this uh, Joshua and Caleb report, so to speak, that God may grant us a little reviving in our bondage, Ezra 9, 8. Yes. Is that, now, that's the hope. And not only is the hope, I think it's the only hope. Is And I think it's the only solution. It's the only answer. The answer is not necessary. The salvation of our nation is not going to be in Donald Trump. It is not going to be in the conservative mm, no. movement. It's not uh, going to be in MAGA. Uh, None uh, of those things is is the hope of our nation. The exactly. hope of our nation is in the presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ in power. The church being revived and there be, being a spiritual awakening in this country. But you will never cause me to believe that if that happens, if mm-hmm. we experience a national revival, and I'm just going to say, I'm I going to record to say this, to those who believe that that cannot happen, you haven't read your Bible. There can be a great falling away, but that does not mean we cannot have national revival. Mm-hmm. There can be a nation on the earth rise up in mm-hmm. the power of God. I think it ought to be America. Mm-hmm. And the reason I believe that is because that's how we started. That's right. It was out of revival we started, and it should be a revival that takes us to glory. That's right. I believe that. So we have to identify the fact, according to that verse in Ezra 9.8, we have to identify the fact first that we're in bondage. And if we can identify the fact that we're in bondage, then we can appropriate the solution to that problem, which is, That's right. Lord, give us a little reviving. Amen. Amen. That is the Joshua and Caleb. That is the Joshua and Caleb report. Well, Jeff, we've run out of time for today. We want to, you want to pick up here tomorrow with the Trump presidency? Yeah. Yeah, let's and do we'll that. And we'll finish up the article tomorrow. And we're so glad that everybody's been with us today. We'll pick it up here tomorrow. And you want to be with the Smith and Rowland show? Yeah, or the Jeff election. show. Either well, way. yeah, we definitely, it's, it's, it's definitely the Jeff show. <laughs> uh, but on election night, we're, election we're, night we're throwing around the idea of having a live podcast through election night. Uh, if anybody wants to see us do that, just throw it out there in there. What we're going to do Respond is to us we here. are going to Let analyze us know how you feel. the analyzers. We're going to listen. You've never seen analyzers analyzed by a better analyzer than the Smith and Rowland show. The greatest wisdom you'll ever come in contact with. We're, we're, so, we're so analyzed that we're, oh no, we're, oh no. Watch, listen, I've been analyzed by the best. <laughs> <laughs> you have. You've been analyzed by the best. Okay, Rowland, say bye. Bye. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for joining today's Smith and Rowland show. You can check out our website at kingdompropheticsociety.org and our daily unplugged podcast at smithandrollinshow.podbean.com. You can also join us on Amazon, Apple, or Spotify.